With the country deeply polarized, the U.S. is bracing for a volatile week. The FBI is warning there could be armed clashes, especially in the city of Portland. And one of the potential triggers for violence is the possibility there'll be no result on the night. This scenario has many thinking of the 2000 election when it was George W. Bush versus Al Gore. Nick Harper reports from Washington. Trump will carry the state of Florida. This year's election night could be lacking a very important component, a result. Of the United States. Everyone should wait several weeks if needed for the outcome of the election. That, that the, the old model of, you know, all the TV folks sitting around and there's a call that night might not apply this year. And we shouldn't sort of panic um, if, if there isn't an immediate result. With many people expected to avoid in-person voting during the pandemic, mail-in ballots could hit record levels. Some states will accept votes up to a week after Election Day, as long as they're postmarked before November the 3rd. Uh, the American people have now spoken, but it's going to take a little while to determine exactly what they said. The U.S. has seen disrupted elections before, the last one in 2000. That close contest between Al Gore and George W. Bush with its hanging chads, butterfly ballots and recounts. It took five weeks to decide, the Supreme Court eventually stepping in to settle the matter, handing Florida's electoral college votes and the election to Mr. Bush. Joseph Geller was involved in recounting the ballots in Florida. I didn't see my office once for 36 days. We were working out of, you know, what they call a war room, you know, kind of day and night, sleeping on couches, getting home when you could. You know, it was extremely difficult. It was very frustrating. But it could be even more frustrating this time round. This election may also have to contend with something that's so ingrained in American tradition that normally it's not even up for discussion, the peaceful transfer of power. President Trump has refused to guarantee he'll step aside if he loses, claiming without evidence mail-in voting is open to widespread fraud. Well, we're going to have to see what happens. You know that I've been complaining very strongly about the ballots, and the ballots are a disaster. I think it's highly likely that he will deny and deny and deny that he has lost. If the votes favor Biden, he'll say those votes are fraudulent. If it appears that Biden has won the election, Trump will say the election was rigged. And so he'll deny that he lost. And that's going to be the real issue is actually getting him to make a concession. And that leaves Democrats concerned that 2000's tussle will seem tame compared to what's potentially ahead. I think we could end up in a situation far worse than 20 years ago. Everybody was prepared to abide by the rule of law and the results of the election. I'm not confident that that's the case now. Experts predict perhaps only a landslide on the night for either candidate will prevent a contentious, drawn-out election. More likely, it'll be harder to count on a quick result, especially one that all sides agree on. Nick Harper, CNA, Washington. And for a closer look, we're joined by Professor Adam Smith from the University of Oxford. Uh, Professor, what's your take on it then? Do you expect a clear winner tomorrow or, a, or is a close, drawn-out scenario more likely? The way that the polls are looking and people have understandable scepticism about the polls after what happened in 2016, but the way in which the polls are looking at the moment would suggest that Biden should win comfortably enough for a result to be clear reasonably soon. But as that report just indicated, there is another possibility that a couple of key states, most likely it would be Pennsylvania, it might be Florida again, uh, would not be able to release their results tonight and possibly not for several days. The, the reality is that because this election is decided by an electoral college and not by a national popular vote, there does, there's a very slim margin between a nail-biting result and a Biden landslide. There's very little difference in terms of the national popular vote between those two outcomes. It just makes a difference where he gets the votes in which particular states. Now, Professor, Biden has been leading the polls for weeks now, as we all know, um, but you know, so did Hillary Clinton four years ago. Um, just how concerned should uh, Trump be at this point? 
Uh, Trump looks like he's losing. There's no doubt about that. I mean, nobody, and I, from what I can tell, um, from what I've, I've heard, not even the Trump campaign thinks that Trump is going to win more votes. The question is, can he nevertheless eke out a victory in the Electoral College as he did four years ago? But this is, uh, Hillary Clinton was in a much weaker position four years ago than Joe Biden is, uh, according to the polls. He has a national polling lead at the moment of between eight or nine percentage points, depending on how you calculate the average. That's double what Hillary Clinton's national lead was. Now, as I've just said, the national polling lead doesn't mean that he's necessarily going to win, but it's very, very hard to imagine how Trump can win in the Electoral College if he's nine or eight or nine points behind nationally. Now, in the in the key swing states, the margin is much closer. It's about four points in Pennsylvania. It's only about two points advantage to Biden in Florida. Um, but again, that is a larger margin for Biden than Hillary Clinton had four years ago. So it, Trump was very, very lucky to win last time. Everything went right for him and everything went wrong for Hillary Clinton in, in the key places. But he would have to be even luckier and or there would have to be an even more cataclysmic polling error uh, in order for him to win uh, this time. And what happens then if Mr. Trump does dispute the results as he's promised to? If Trump, uh, there's a difference between not conceding and disputing the results. I mean, from what we know of Trump's personality, as, as was made clear in that package we just saw, it seems vanishingly unlikely that Trump will make a generous concession, even if he looks like he's lost in an electoral college landslide. But if the uh, rest of the Republican Party and if the, 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 the media, apart from the, the really screwy right-wing pro-Trump uh, websites, all accept that Trump has lost, then in a sense, it doesn't really matter if he lacks generosity about concession. But disputing the results is a different matter. And if he disputes the results in a close election, and we've already seen lawsuits attempting to throw out 100,000 legally cast ballots in Texas because they were ca they were um, cast in a in a curbside um, ballot uh, procedure, which um, the, the state of Texas had set up, perfectly legitimate, perfectly secure. The the Republican Party is desperate to try and invalidate as many ballots as possible right now because they know they're so unlikely to win a majority of the of the vote, and that is what people are really fearing could lead to weeks and weeks of court wrangles. And of course, because Donald Trump has been so successful in putting so many Republican appointees onto the federal bench, onto appointing judges at all levels, including on the Supreme Court, what Democrats fear is, if, is that if this ends up in the courts, as it did in 2000, as we were reminded in that package, then uh, the courts will rule in Trump's favour. Now, Professor, you've mentioned before that, you know, this election could be the most consequential uh, presidential election for decades to come. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? I think it, it, it certainly feels consequential. There's no doubt that I haven't been able to be in the United States this time for the first presidential election for many years because of the difficulties of traveling in the middle of a pandemic. But from, uh, I mean, we all know from our contacts in the United States that people are more tense and more frightened, more nervous on both sides here than has been the case for many, many presidential cycles. I think the issue is that if Trump is re-elected, especially on the assumption that he's re-elected while losing the popular vote, and if he continues, as no doubt he will, to lay siege to the institutions of the American state, to fire uh, officials, he already signaled that he's going to fire Anthony Fauci, for example, um, it, that, that it's going to be very difficult to run the, the, the government if he's going to be in continual uh, deadlock with the um, democratic institutions of the country, then the outlook is very grim indeed um, for the United States. If, on the other hand, Biden wins, then you could potentially see the beginnings of a profound direction, redirection in American policy on key issues that affect the rest of the world, including most notably on climate change. It's been very good talking to you. Thanks very much for joining us, uh, Professor Adam Smith there from the University of Oxford.